strength is typically superior than dexterity and you could fight me on this one and let me explain why. While this video might be a little controversial, I don't care. Because all bias aside, there is some differences between strength and dexterity. They are not the same, but not in the way most people would think. And let's talk about that. Being the two primarily physical stats in the game, dexterity and strength seem to have a lot in common. And oftentimes people try to associate this with different playstyles. Oftentimes trying to fit them into archetype set do not necessarily make sense within the game structure. But to identify the differences between dexterity and strength, we have to look at everything within those structures. That includes playstyle, weapon access and variety, damage, defense, unique benefits, hybrid builds, moveset, ashes of war, and unique weapons. In fact, when we look at playstyle, people assume that dexterity is going to be that fast attacking kind of builds. And while there is some truth to that, there is nothing preventing strength from having a very, very similar archetype. For example, probably the best fast attacking weapon in the game is a Lord Sword Straight Sword. Now, this is associated with dexterity, but unfortunately, it's typically done just as well, if not better on strength. And while there are other weapons that do attack fast and do incredibly well on dexterity builds, you pretty much almost have a one to one ratio on terms of weapons that could do effectively the same thing just as well, even when one handed. And this also includes status effect builds. So strength has nothing that really blocks them from doing effectively a good job of status effects. In fact, strength arcane builds are probably one of the strongest builds in the game. So well, yes, strength might be associated with the unga bunga. It's not like they can't do anything else and do it quite effectively. Now, they do also have the ability to use shields. So when it comes to looking at playstyle, there's not really any advantage with going dexterity unless you're looking at spears, heavy thrusting swords, and whips, in which those typically are always going to perform better on dexterity builds, at least when you're one-handed the weapon. In fact, strength is just going to give you a much greater variety of options. And when I say a much greater variety of options, I'm not just talking about playstyles, I'm also talking about weapon variety as well. So in general, dexterity doesn't really have that many high weapon requirements, at least when it comes to strength. Pretty much, there is very little cost to non invest in dexterity. Dexterity in general has just much lower weapon requirements, so you're hardly going to be blocked out of anything. Let's put it this way, there is no infeasible weapon that requires more than 24 dexterity, and there's only 7 that require more than 20. And when you go down and down on the list, most weapons are going to probably require around either 10 to 12 dexterity, with a few outliers here and there. Meanwhile, any straight dexterity build or most other hyper dexterity builds require about a 17 to 20 investment into strength at the bare minimum in order to use some of their best weapons. For example, when you look at the dex favorite weapons such as the Guardian Sword Spear, the Bolt of Grand Sacks, Bloodhound's Fang, the Dragon King's Frag Blade, the Cross Naginata, or the Nagakipa, they require a decent amount of strength investment before you could even hope to wield them. And strength really doesn't have that problem where you have to invest into something else in order to make the bare requirements for the build, so it gives them a lot more leverage in terms of what you want to do with your build so you could invest it more to vigor mind endurance faith if you want to use some incantations and it is all going to work incredibly well together that might sound well and good but somebody is probably going to say look well deck spells are technically tankier because they're lighter and that is ridiculous because they use the same weapons yes there are some heavier strength weapons out there but the assumption is that because dex weapons are lighter that they are technically tankier when that is not how any of this works as strength builds can actually use some incredibly light weapons as well, or just light weapons, and use it just so effectively. The previous statement about the weapon types that they could use is the main point of this. It is a poor assumption that some players may have because it just seems right. It's just what feels right. But that's not how that works. In fact, strength builds are tankier because when you level up your strength, you gain physical defense. Meanwhile, when you level up your dex, you get defense from falling, which hardly affects anything. In fact, the only good passive from dexterity, and I'm putting good in quotations, is going to be the cast of speed because the effect is quite minimal and it's easy to gain virtual dex through other means. It's not really going to be noticeable too much outside of some of the dragon incantations, some of the sorceries, as well as the lightning spear. So much so, in fact, that if unless you're over leveled or you're using some sort of weapon that requires a lot of dexterity or you really just kind of go a or you really like ice spear, there's really not too much of a reason to go for this. It's better off just to level up your incantation, level up your intelligence up to about 80 before you could even think about investing too much into dexterity, at least if you're looking at just pure spell casting. After all, there's not really a seal that scales too well with dexterity. If you put this in comparison, the claw mark seal scales off of strength and is actually not bad in terms of scale. It actually scales pretty well, actually. Like, it's not that bad. You could actually use it with a lot of the 
um, servants of rot incantations like pest threads, lightning spear, or anything else like that. And yeah, it's gonna do decent job. It's gonna get the job done. It's not as good as a pure faith build or a faith intelligence or faith arcane. But guess what? You got a really strong weapon also paired with you and the ability to conveniently buff and honestly it being worth it. So outside of the cast speed thing, we're kind of seeing a situation where strength seems almost objectively better in terms of playstyle, weapon variety, defenses, and yes, even the ability to cast things. But let's kind of like move on to this a bit more and look at Ashes of War because weapon strike ashes of war scale off of AR of your current weapon. And this actually does benefit from the ability to two hand. So when you're two handing, you gain a 50% additional bonus to strength. By the way, yes, strength gets that 50% bonus, already kind of making it better than dexterity in that way as well. So when you pair that with any other weapon and then use the ash of war, you're actually gonna get more out of those weapon strike ashes of war on a heavy build than you are on a keen build. This even includes something like Unsheaf on the Katanas. So when we go further and further down the list, you're seeing more and more points in which, yeah, Dexterity isn't really good in this regard, that regard, and that regard relative to strength. But we've only covered one type of Ash War, Weapon Strike, which are more common. Yes, even the keen ones are better on a heavy build, but there's one thing we did miss, or rather we missed three things. One, Bold Ash War, two weapon infusions specifically elemental infusions and three somber weapons but first let's stick on the category of ashes of war specifically bullet ashes of war so this right here always performs better on keen and there's a reason for this to put it this way the death scaling for keen is going to be the same as the strength scaling for heavy and two handing does not affect this but with keen you also have the quality scaling for the strength and even at the lowest requirements you always kind of start off with around 10 strength and you're going to be benefiting from that no matter what you do so even when you hybrid it especially when you look at diminishing returns and stuff like that and soft caps the dex version the dex variant the keen variant will always outscale the heavy and that is only because the heavy completely eliminates the dex scaling if it was the other way around or if it remained the same then the strength variant would remain just viable if not more so and then when we look at other bold ash wars, such as lightning bolt, ice spear, etc, 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 guess what? Those all scale off of just dexterity. The only real exception to that is like Flame of the Red Mains, but Flame of the Red Mains has been nerfed so much that it's not quite as viable as what it used to be. And now going back to the weapon strike base ash war, while heavy does outperform Kane, you do have lightning infusion and lightning infusion on any of the weapon strike ash war, no matter the enemy is going to be good. It's going to hit hard. Compare this to the fire, which fire has so many weaknesses to the point where it is too situational. Lightning always works. Lightning is usually considered a better infusion. In PvP, lightning is probably the best infusion in the game. And because there's so many ways to multiply the damage, even if it is split damage, you are going to find that lightning is going to surpass Keen in most situations. Unless the enemy heavily resists lightning, or you're not doing enough damage to pass the flat defense, then yeah, in that case, that is the only case in which Kane's gonna do better. But typically speaking, Lightning is always gonna outperform, especially on heavier weapons. This is actually why the Lightning's Vihander is just a beautiful masterpiece of a weapon. You also have the two exception of the Arumi and the Guardian Sword Spear, which is just a ridiculous exception that I don't even know who put this one in the game. So we're already seeing that Dexterity can actually be viable and can be competitive strength in some ways but it's not the ways that people try to sell it as. And yes, typically strength is doing better already. I'm not here saying that you cannot run a dexterity build and that dexterity is gonna be worse in every situation. It's just that strength is really, really good. But there's one category in which might redeem dex for some people, and that is gonna be somber weapons. Overall, dexterity does have an array of better somber weapons as a whole, and that is one thing that does stand out quite a bit to most players. Everything from the Bolt of Grand Sacks to the Bloodhounds Fang are incredible weapons that are really, really good and can trivialize the game. But most of all, it's really easy for players to use. Compare with something like, let's say, the Bloodhounds Fang or the Bolter Grand Sacks to Mogwin Spear. Now, while Moog Spear is incredibly good and, in fact, almost kind of cheeses of the game, the difference is with Mogwin Spear, you have to know the boss fight pretty well. Compare this to the Bolter Grand Sacks, which you don't need to know what you're doing as long as you have a general understanding on when to use it and when not to use it, which those frames are relatively rare and kind of far between. Yeah, the Bolton Grand Sex is really good, especially the reach and range it has. 
compare this to Moog Spear, and yeah, if you use Moog Spear at the wrong time, you are going to die quickly. Meanwhile, something like the Bloodhound's Fang, which is probably one of the best weapons in the game for PvE, you use this right here early, early on, and it can just cheese the game straight out. Now, is it going to be better than, let's say, a lot of the heavy weapons later on in the game? No, but this one right here, you get it easily, and it's kind of easy to use. But when you look at these Somper weapons, or a lot of the unique dex weapons, they don't really fit within the category of what people would expect to be dex. This does not mean they're not good weapons though, they are just not within the same category. A lot of these weapons are very heavy, they're very inefficient in terms of stat investment. But are they good? Yeah, absolutely, they are some of the best weapons in the game. Overall, would I say strength is better? Yes, and that's probably because strength is just one of the best design stats in the game. It's very well balanced and it's really, really, really strong. You really can't go wrong with strength, and that's the thing about it. No matter how you build it, when you look at it, you see what you get, but you also get a little more. And that is the thing about dex. People just get dex wrong as a whole. It is not always the attack fast kind of stat. It is not how that works. It's not always going to be the power stance stat. Is it sometimes? Yes, but it's not that simple. It works differently than what people expect, and that's the big thing about it. Strength as a whole is just an amazing stat, and that's how it's going to work. Unfortunately, Strength also doesn't have any fire-based somber weapons, which is a huge disappointment on my part. But Strength still is incredibly strong. It has probably the most build diversity. Can use any Ash War. Does amazing with incantations and just works well with so many weapons to the point where it's something you really can't go wrong with. And all this is why strength is typically a superior attribute, a superior stat to dexterity. Is it so much more broken that you should not consider building dexterity? No, but at the same time, it is so much more user friendly and almost a perfect stat to the point where, yeah, you should build it. It works in almost any situation. So why not?